little lesson on how banks make money. And at the end of this, I'll tie in some infinite banking stuff, but I wanted to uh, just do a quick little educational video on how these banks make money and why every single building downtown in every one of the cities, the biggest buildings are always PNC, Regions, Bank of America, and all those other banks. So check this out for a sec. We're our little guy right here. We'll call him Tim. Uh, he's going to take $10,000 and put it in his safe at the bank, okay? And this little banker guy over here, he's got the money. Most people would look at this situation and say, okay, now Tim is now you know, he's got a savings account and now the bank's got the asset of 10 grand. Well, actually, when you, when you pull back the curtain, you'll realize that, um, the, the, you'll, you'll see that actually it's a liability. The cash that's sitting in Tim's vault in the bank's vault is actually a liability because he's got to pay Tim $25 and look at it it's 0.25%. So yeah, you know, you'll see some, accounts that may be more, some less, but you're, you're, you're getting the picture and you're seeing where this is going. What these bankers do, as, as maybe some of you, most of you may know, I don't know, but they pay you a 0.25% interest on the $10,000 and they go take that money and they go lend it out at 5.25% interest. As you know, on mortgages and, and uh, car loans and credit cards and everything in between. Sometimes it's even higher than 5.25, but let's just call it how it is. So what you do when you look at this number here, $520, $25 divided by 25 equals a 2,100% return on cash. And the best part is they're not even using their own money. They're using your money. They're just playing the arbitrage game. That's what the name of the game. They're using someone else's money to get rich. It sounds like it's almost too good to be true. Let's look at basically how these banks create inflation for the rest of us and why we need to be hedging our bets against the devaluation of the dollar. But that's another video. But, but bankers are like magicians. They create money out of thin air legally. Literally, it's in the law saying they can fraction reserve lend up to however much money is in their vault. Some some banks, it's up to 90%. Some, depending upon where we are in the economy, it can be more, it can be less. But most of the time, it hovers around 90%. So they, they think about inflation as as like a, like a pizza. Bankers or the government, really, they think they can give people more money or by by cutting the slices thinner and thinner and thinner they're just happening creating more pizza they're, they're making more slices shouldn't that fill everybody up because before you only had one or two you had two slices but they just cut those two slices in half gave you four slices shouldn't you be more full you have four slices now no you don't because now your slices are are half is they're not they're only worth half of what they were before the size and the volume so the, the size of the pizza doesn't get any bigger so where I'm getting at, this is going to blow you away when you see these numbers. So now what is the banker's return on investment? You bring in $10,000, they pay you 25 bucks. They'd still lend it out at 5.25, but yeah, they added a zero. They're now earning $5,250 on your 10,000. They're not just making 2,100%, they're making 21,000% on your money. Okay, so think about that for just one second. They didn't just take your 10 grand and pay you 25 shackles. They now just added a zero, added 90 extra thousand dollars to that, lended it out at the same rate, created money out of thin air, and then all that income, because at the end of the day, your money is the liability on the books. The real asset to them are the mortgages and the loans that they lend out to people and the interest that they earn in return. So they're earning in that year $5,250, okay? They brought in on the return on investment is 21,000%, okay? So think about this. Now we, we, we're, we're understanding something. The banking business is a very great business to be in. Obviously, we're not allowed to print money, but if we go back to this first suggestion here, even if it is only, we're only 10,000 and 10,000, we're still at 2,100%. So we're looking at a very good business model, okay? So think about this. After after we pay, let's let's look at this. After we just got done getting paid twenty five dollars of our ten grand, ask yourself the question: How much of this profit of the fifty two hundred and fifty dollars? How much of this profit, this number right here, does that bank share with you? They pay you your earned interest rate of point two zero two five on your checking account. So of this number, how much of that profit was dispersed into your account at the end of the year? So think about it like this way. Let's just use a bigger number of, of how banks are doing. Let's say a bank um, earns one billion dollars this year. Okay, after they've paid out all that, they they gross two billion. They paid out all their fees. They paid out all their employees. They paid all their interest out, and they netted one billion. 
Ask yourself with your money in that in your business account, your checking account, how much money is that bank paying you of that net $1 billion? Ask yourself that. So think about this. The customer of that bank does, I'm reading this, customer of the bank doesn't make an investment in the bank like an owner does. So that customer doesn't and shouldn't expect a return of profit share from that bank like an owner or shareholder does. You hadn't invested anything. You haven't invested one dollar. You just have your money sitting there liquid, being able to pull out whenever you want. That's not an investment. You're just sitting there waiting to deploy it into something else. So let's move on. So obviously, we've got to the point where we can say banking is a great business to be in, okay? It's the best business in the world. Obviously, there's other things. There's real estate, there's stocks, there's bonds, whatever it is. But let's just talk about banking in general. As you can see through the numbers, banking is the number one business in the world. And guess what? Infinite banking through life insurance is the exact same business. It's the same thing as what banks do. They take your 10000 Only The only difference is they can't print money. So they take, let's say you do the same exact thing as what a bank does. The ten, you bring $10,000 only to a life insurance company. What this life insurance company does is they take your $10,000 and they go lend it to this little guy, Bob the Builder over here. He's going to go out there and build a, a shopping center. And they're going to, what they're going to do is they're not just going to pay you, because remember before, they're only paying you 0. 0.0025. Over here, they're paying you 0. 0. 0.045. So you're paying you 4.5% on your $10,000. So you're earning 450 bucks in a savings account, remember. This is savings, not investing, okay? And what they're going to do with that 10000 is they're going to take it over here and give it to Bob the Builder, and he's they're going to lend it out in, into a maybe a shopping center development, and they're going to lend him out at 9%. And, he's going to, and the insurance company is going to make $900, okay? So these life insurance companies, they do the same things as bank do, okay? But I want you to decipher the difference here. Here's where it gets really, really cool. You don't just get the earned interest. You don't just get this piece of the pie. You now get to become a stockholder. You get a dividend. You get a profit share. When I was talking earlier, this number right here, this 5250 number, that billion dollars that we were talking about, you get a piece of that because every time you park money with a life insurance company properly structured for infinite banking, you become a mutual owner of that insurance company. Every year, your share gets bigger. Every year, the profits in these life insurance companies get bigger and bigger. You get a bigger piece of that pie. So look at this. In a, in a banking world, the dividend goes to stockholders, and then also a dividend goes to life insurance policy owners. And then the earned interest, you get stockholders and life insurance policy owners. Look at this. At the end of the day, the only difference in these two things are how earnings and profits are allocated. The life insurance policy owners get both. When you're just a customer at the bank, a BB&T bank or a Regions bank or wherever, you're simply a customer. You're not doing any profit sharing. You're not a you're not a you're not a stakeholder in that bank. Where with life insurance or with infinite banking, you get the guaranteed cash flow or sorry, the guaranteed cash value, which is the earned interest annually, that four and a half percent. Plus, you get a dividend every year, which is the profit share on the back end. After all the expenses have been paid, it's the same thing. You, the life insurance company earns $2 billion. They pay out everything they got to pay out, and they net out a billion. You get a piece of that. So when you practice, and, this is, and I'll just end with this. This kind of t- hit me very in between the eyes. Think about this. When you practice infinite banking, you're becoming your own banker by becoming an owner of like a life insurance bank. The life insurance company does the same things that banks do. They take your money, they lend it out at a higher interest rate, and then on the back end, they keep a profit. But this time around, you're not just a customer earning the earned interest, but you earn a profit with that business, with that bank. So don't just consider being a customer. Figure out a way to be an owner, and that's what's starting with infinite banking today.